we've, we've been in a series uh, called Marriage, Singleness, and Divorce. Uh, and so today I'm going to talk about singleness. Now, listen, let me go ahead and clarify who's single and who's not, because I know some of you are like, well, I'm not sure if I'm single. Okay? So if you're here and you're dating, you're single. Okay? If you're here and you're divorced, you're single. If you haven't remarried, um, if you're here and you're widowed, you're single. And so, or if you're just here and you're desperate, you're single. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally not going there. So uh, all those people, those are the single people the morning that, that, that we want to talk to. And, and I know how some people think. And they say, well, I've been, you know, I've been dating him since 1980 and we bought the F-250 and the trailer together. And, and so we're technically married by South Carolina law. No, listen, you're not married. The only thing that, the only thing that, that, that marriage, listen, marriage is established by God. And God takes two single people, two single people, and he puts them together through the bond of marriage. He takes a man and a woman, and he puts them together in the bond of marriage, and they unite. And I won't get into what unite means. We talked about that a few weeks ago, but that is, that is marriage. And so, if you would, I want to do one other thing. i like for you to stand. It just it seems to honor and respect God, and we stand. I, I just want you to stand today, if you would, um, and we're going to pray to God and ask him to bless this time uh, that we're going to have together. Father, we ask for a word of inspiration from you today. Um, I ask for a word of inspiration for every person in these seats. Uh, most specifically, I ask you to minister to those who are single. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus that you speak to them and you remind them of their value and their sacred worth. If there's anyone in here today, Father, that's rushing into marriage or that thinks that marriage will bring fulfillment, I pray that through this me message, you remind them that nothing fully satisfies but you. I pray for those who are single due to divorce or due uh, to a death. Um, and, and I just ask you today to minister to us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And you can be seated. So I was, uh, I was single until I was 30 years old. Um, I started praying for the person that I wanted to marry when I was 19. Uh, I ended up having to wait 11 years uh, for that prayer um, to, to come to fruition. Um, and as I told you a couple of weeks ago, we asked the kids to leave, uh, I kind of rushed it. Um, and I didn't wait on God to bring me the person who God had for me. Um, and I have dealt with a lot of, uh, a lot of a, a burden because of that. Um, but I'll tell you the hardest part for me about the singleness um, was actually being a pastor. You see, I started pastoring when I was 25 years old, and so I had five years as a single person, as a pastor. And I'm just going to tell you that being a pastor and singleness don't mix. And the truth is, a lot of people in my last church, a lot of the older people, um, got married when they were really, really young. I'm talking like 12 um, and it was like, I mean, it just, it blew my mind. Literally had a couple in our last church that got married at 14 and 16. And I'm like, dad, mom, we want to get married. Like, well, let's finish middle school first. You know, I'm like, I, I don't know. Just, um, but as a pastor, everybody was putting a lot of pressure on me to get married. Uh, it was like, you know, you need to be married. And the thing is, if you're single and you're 30 or over, something's wrong with you. At least that's what society tells you. Um, and I came so close to getting married to the wrong person, and I picked out a ring and all that stuff, and, and the Lord was just like, you know what? That's not who you're supposed to marry. And one of the hardest things in my life was going through a breakup with that person when I said, you know what? I really just feel like I'm just, you know, I'm 30, and everybody's saying, like, you, you need to get married, and, and I, it was just a really, really hard decision for me. And I, I'll never forget the girl that I broke up with. I think she'd be okay with me telling the story. Um, and she, she told me, she, when, when we left, I, like, when she left me after we broke up, one of our last conversations, she had her phone with her, and it started ringing, and the song on it was, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on. If you like it, then you should have put it. And I, I just remember, I was like, okay, see ya. You know, life goes on. But, um, so, you know, but singleness, singleness is, it, it can be difficult. Um, and so I knew that there was this pressure to get married. And I knew what the Bible said about marriage, that God had this great gift that was saved for me and this sacred thing uh, that could be so awesome if I found the right person. But I also knew what the Bible said about singleness. Because I'd been studying my Bible since I was about 12 years old. I knew what the Bible said. 
Uh, and the Bible tells us that it's actually okay to be single. It tells us that it's okay to be single. I want to pull up a scripture. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7. And I suggest sometime that you read it if you're married, if you're divorced, if you're single. I, I, I suggest that you read the whole chapter. But 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 8. Here's what it says. Now to the unmarried and to the widows I say it is good for them to stay unmarried. Let's just stop right there. Holy cow. If desperate Donna is in here today, I want you to hear this verse. It's okay. I was there. You know, I just felt all the pressure. You know, so many people in our society want to rush into marriage, and they want to rush other people into marriage is the worst thing. But for me, I'm going to tell you who the miserable people are. The miserable people aren't the single people. The miserable people are the people who rushed into marriage, and they got married. And some of you grew up with parents like that. Parents who are miserably married because they felt like they had to get married so young because everybody was putting the pressure on them. Some of you are here right now, and you could get up, and you're like, I could testify about this. And they rushed into it. And that's why I want to speak to the single people today and say that you shouldn't rush into something when God has created a person out there for you, a person who can complete you and complete your life. You see, Paul says in this text, he says it's good for them to stay unmarried as I do. Now, I want you to think about that. The Apostle Paul wasn't married. Now, last week I preached on marriage, and a guy came up to me after the service. I thought it was really funny. And he said, this is really weird. Why are you giving us advice? Why is this guy giving us advice from in the scriptures when he wasn't married himself? I just thought that was really funny. I was like, I never thought about that. Paul wasn't married. But he's telling everybody else about the married couples, how they need to submit. <laughs> so, But Paul says, as I do. You see, Paul wasn't married, and Paul will tell us later why he wasn't married. Why wasn't he married? It was so that he could focus on the kingdom. So he could focus on the kingdom of Christ. Because you see, when you get married, you get distracted. Now those of you in here that are married should be saying amen, because it's difficult, isn't it? It's like you, get, you want to go out and do things, and you just can't do things without asking your spouse. You have one calendar together when you get married, if you have a good marriage. Um, you have one bank account, if you have a good marriage. And Paul says, you know what, I could use all the energy that I could put into marriage, and I could take that and I could use it for the kingdom. In verse 9, I want you to check this out, just at the end of this verse, he says, if they cannot control themselves, now, listen, teenagers, if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. I just want you to pay attention to this verse, because this was me when I was a teenager, couldn't control myself. It's better for a person to marry than to burn with passion. So what Paul is saying is that there are a few people out there who can resist um, the passion. Now, I don't think that's a large percentage. I think that's a small percentage. But there are some people out there that are completely okay um, without being intimate. That's what Paul is talking about. Uh, and he says it's just better for you not to marry. Now, one of the reasons marriage was created is so that we wouldn't fall into sexual immorality. And so marriage, uh, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 7, wives and husbands have a responsibility to one another to keep each other satisfied. I won't go into detail. And so what Paul is saying here, he's saying, you know what, one of the reasons that we have marriage is so that you don't fall into sexual sin. Now it doesn't mean that we're supposed to rush out as teenagers and try to find the right person, although our society has pushed us into getting married when we're like 50 because we all want to get degrees. But I think God's original design was for us to be praying and seeking who we were going to marry when we were young and to find that person, oh, I don't know, maybe by 20, and to live a happy life with them. Um, and one of the interesting things is that marriage, Paul says, is a refuge from sexual immorality, but we've done the exact opposite, and our society thinks that sexual immorality is a refuge from marriage. So instead of getting married, we partake in sexual sin. But well, Paul says it should be the other way around. Marriage should keep you from sexual sin. Now let's look at verses 25 through 27. This is where we're going to start, and this is where it gets interesting. Verse 25, he says, now about virgins. Now, when he's talking about virgins, he's talking about single people, because back then, like, if, if you were not a virgin, you were stoned, and it was crazy. So you're a single person. Now about single people, I have no command from the Lord. I give a judgment as one who, by the Lord's mercy, is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it's good for a man to remain as he is. Are you pledged to a woman? Do not seek to be released. Are you free from such a commitment? Do not look for a wife. 
Here's what Paul's saying. He's saying, listen, I can't tell you to get married or to not get married. Every situation's different. You see, Paul, he's living in the Corinthians, he's, he's writing to the Corinthian church, and he knows that there's some people who are married happily, there's some people who are married and they're miserable, just like in our church. You know, there's some people that are single and they're happy, there's some people who are single and miserable. And he says, I can't tell you one, one commandment from the Lord, but I can tell you this, we have a crisis on our hands. What's the crisis? People don't know Jesus Christ. And so if you're single, you need to focus on telling people about Jesus Christ. If you're married, you need to focus on telling people about Jesus Christ. Do y'all have that today? You getting that? If you're single, you need to focus on telling people about Jesus. That's your job. If you're married, you need to focus together on telling people about Jesus. It's why marriage was created. You see, in marriage, we, we talked about this idea of synergy, that God takes an individual who can do a lot for God and another individual who can do a lot for God, and they bring them together, and those two individuals can de together can do more than they could individually. And so Paul says, I'm not really worried about whether you're married or whether you're not. I'm worried about whether or not people are going to hell. I mean, that's the question at the end of the day, is how, whatever your status is, are you sharing the gospel? Now look at verse 28. He says, if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin or single person marries, she has not sinned. But those who marry will face many troubles in this life. Can I get an Amen. You see it right there. I underlined it. I underlined it for you. You need to write that one down. If you're single, if you're a teenager, if you're in college, you're like, I've got to get married. Listen, just underline it. Marriage is not as easy as it looks on the outside. The commercials and the movies make it look like really fun, like you're just out running through dandelion fields all day long with ham sandwiches, and you're going to sit down and kiss each other while you drink a bottle of wine and just life's going to be great. And I'm going to promise you, listen, life as a married person can be great, but it can also be difficult. And you can be distracted from doing the work of the Lord. Marriage is work. It takes energy to keep it alive. And see, I want to tell you, this past week was Valentine's Day. You know what the married couples were doing if they were good married couples? They were out getting candy and getting flowers and planning dates. This is what we do as married couples, right? You know what the single people should have been doing if they were smart? Should have been going out to Redbox, getting about five movies, getting some sushi, going back to the house, kicking your feet up, watching the whole movie, not being interrupted by the kids. Amen, I'm married people. <laughs> you see, it's like we don't take advantage when we're single of the blessings that God has given us and the freedom. And then we get married and we forget about the blessings of marriage. And so Paul is saying, you know what? He's saying marriage is hard, so enjoy your single life. Now, we look at verses 29 through 31, um, and I just want you to follow along as I read this. He, he, he explains. He says, what I mean. So he's explaining. What I mean, brothers and sisters, is that time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they do not. Now, we're going to explain that in a minute. Those who mourn as if they did not. Those who are happy as if they were not. Those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep. Those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. Now here's what Paul's not saying. He's not saying neglect your family, neglect your wife, don't be happy. Stop crying, be depressed. Rather he's saying just live for the sake of Jesus Christ. He's like, because time is short. I spent so many nights worrying that I wasn't going to get married. I mean, you know, Satan likes to speak lies into your head. It's like I would look in the mirror and he'd be like, you got big ears and a big nose. I'm like, God, I know. <laughs> and you'll never get married. You see, you've been praying to God since you were 19, but she's not out there. And God doesn't have her for you. See, Satan loves to whisper lies like that into your ears. And then you got God and the Holy Spirit over here saying, you know what, you just need to chill out and you need to tell people about Jesus Christ because this is your opportunity. You see, single people, you need to go to Africa. Single people need to go to Africa. You know why? Because married people just can't get up and go to Africa. you got kids. You're married. Is it okay if I go? No, you can't go and leave me with the kids. <laughs> no, no. You need to go on a mission trip. You see, you've got the opportunity and the time to tell people about Jesus Christ. You see, when you get to heaven and you stand before God, I don't think God's going to say, 
I don't think he's going to say, so tell me about your marriage. How was your marriage? Or I don't think he's going to say, so how was single life? I think God's going to say, did you use your marriage to glorify me? And did you use your singleness to glorify me? See, that's the accountability that we're going to have, is did you use what was given for the kingdom? Now, I highlighted a portion in verses 32 through 35. I would like for you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how he can please the Lord, but a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife, and his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit, but a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. I'm saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord. I love marriage. Marriage is great. I love coming home at 5 o'clock and, and, and I walk into the door. Um, and well, I, sometimes I love that. Actually, that's really hard when I'm trying to get the girls there. But um, Okay, let me put it this way. After we get settled, I love this time. When I'm sitting on the floor and I've got my two girls and I've got my wife and we're all in the house and we've got some music on the background and we've got some food cooking and we're all together. Now, married people, isn't that fun? It's like the coolest time. Just love that time. But I want to tell you something, and I'm going to be straight up honest. I'm wearing my emotions on my sleeve as I usually do. I feel torn daily. I feel so torn in my life because I've also got you and trying to shepherd you and trying to be a, a good pastor. And when I'm at home, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. You know where I am mentally? I'm with you. I'm thinking about you. I'm thinking about somebody that sent me an email, somebody that called me, somebody that needs to be baptized. I'm thinking about the service, I'm thinking about music. And so I'm doing that when I'm with my family. And then the problem is I get to church and I get here and I'm doing all this stuff. You know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about my wife. And I'm thinking about my kids. And I'm thinking about how I need to be spending time with them. And I constantly feel torn and it exhausts me. Can anybody relate? And this is what Paul's saying is that you're going to feel torn if you're married. And so before you get into all that, if you're single, party. <laughs> Tell people about Jesus. Enjoy your time. Um, one of my favorite uh, sitcoms is Seinfeld. Um, I want to show you a video from Seinfeld. I want you to watch this, and uh, if we can get it to play. And, and I want you to... Um, I want to see if it if it resonates with with anybody. Let's see if we hey, can. well, I had a very interesting lunch with George Costanza today. Really? We were talking about our lives, uh -huh. and we both kind of realized we're kids. We're not men. So then you asked yourselves, isn't there something more to life? Yes, <laughs> we did. Yeah. Well, let me clue you in on something. There isn't. <laughs> There is absolutely not. I mean, what are you thinking about, Jerry? Marriage? Family? Well, they're yeah. prisons. <laughs> Man-made prisons. You're doing time. You get up in the morning, she's there. You go to sleep at night, she's there. It's like you've got to ask permission to, to, to use the bathroom. Is it all right if I use the bathroom? <laughs> really? Yeah, and you can forget about watching TV while you're eating. I can? Oh. Yeah! You know what? Because it's dinner time. And you know what you do at dinner? What? You talk about your day. How was your day today? Did you have a good day today or a bad day today? Well, what kind of day was it? Well, I don't know. How about you? How was your day? Boy, it's sad, Jerry. It's a sad state of affairs. I'm glad we had this talk. Oh, you have no idea. Oh, I don't know if anybody can relate. You know, I don't want to knock on marriage. If you're single, I want you to know marriage is the most awesome thing in the world. But it really is, it really is difficult. And it takes your energy and it takes your time. Um, and I want you to understand that you have freedom to serve Jesus Christ. You have freedom to give him your life and to give it wholeheartedly to him. And some of us in here just need to fall in love with Jesus Christ. You stop looking to fall in love with somebody else. You need to look to fall in love with Jesus. Here's how we're going to wrap it up. Verses 36 through 38. 
It says, if anyone is worried that he might not be acting honorably towards the virgin that he's engaged to. Now, let me pause right here and say that he's speaking to engaged people. So if you're engaged and you're in here, I want you to listen to this. Now, there may be a few of you. He said, if he's worried that he might not be acting honorably towards the virgin he's engaged to, and if his passions are too strong and he feels he ought to marry, he should do as he wants. He's not sinning. They should get married. But the man who settled the matter in his own mind and who is under no compulsion but has control over his own will and who has made up his mind not to marry the virgin, this man also does the right thing. So then, he who marries the virgin does the right thing, but he who does not marry her does better. So just to tell you right quick, in Paul's day, the, husband, the, the father and the mother used to pick the groom and the father and the mother used to pick the bride and, and they would get married and when they were engaged, it was a really huge deal. Like they had already exchanged like property and money and the parents had shook hands and all this stuff. And Paul's saying, you know what? If you're engaged to somebody you shouldn't be, break it off. So if you're engaged and you're here today and the Lord's telling you don't be married, don't get married to that person, break it off. Well, that's going to be so hard and they're going to get so angry. Try living with them 40 years. And being unhappy. Break it off. If you're engaged and you're happy, don't sweat it. Get married. It's a beautiful thing. It's the shortened version. Verse 39 through 40. This is the last, last verse. A woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if a husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes, but he must belong to the Lord. In my judgment, she is happier if she stays as she is, and I think that I too have the Spirit of God. So he's speaking to the widows. He's speaking to the single people who are widows, and he says, or you think about people who are divorced. We'll talk to them next week. Um, he says, you know what? If you're a widow, don't feel like you've got to rush and get married. Because I know that's hard if you're a widow in here, and I want to say I'm sorry today and that that your spouse is not with you. Um, and that's actually a good many people in our church. And I want to say I'm sorry, um, but I want to tell you, don't rush into marriage. Don't marry the guy that you shouldn't just because he's got a house and a car and he's got a bank account. Do not do that. Seek God first. See, it's all about seeking God. This, this is it. That, that's, that's, that's the end of the day. Seek God. Um, this is the last thing I want to say. And, and I've and I got to stop because we just got to stop. Um, your value is not in your marriage. Your value is not in your marriage. Your value is not in your singleness. Your value is in what? You're a child of God. So I don't care where you are today, if you're in a marriage and you're unhappy, if you're in a marriage, you're, you're happy, or if you're single and you're unhappy, if you're single and you're happy, you're looking at the wrong thing. We can all have peace and joy in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I want you to remember that today. I want you to close your eyes with me if you want. Um, Father, I ask you today to uh, just drop your Holy Spirit down out of heaven right now. Let your Holy Spirit descend. I've taken a lot of scriptures and, and thrown them um, around today, but Father, I, I ask that they convict I pray that if people are here today and they're single, God, that they feel the worth and the value that comes from you. They find their value in Jesus Christ. I pray for the single people today that they will set up a date with you. Married people will set up a date with you to schedule a time where we sit down with you with a cup of coffee in our Bible and we seek you first. We know the Bible tells us that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to us. So I pray today for the single people and I pray for the people that they will marry, that they have a peace that you have chosen someone for them. Or Father, if they're made to be single for the rest of their life, I pray they have a peace that only comes from you. I do pray for married couples today if they're here and they're hurting and they feel unhappy. I pray that your Holy Spirit can bring them out of that mess, that they as a couple will come to the cross, that the husbands will get on their knees, apologize to their wives, lead their families to church, wives will look at you and they'll trust their husbands and they'll raise their children in the Lord. I ask at this time, Father, that you break any bond over anyone in here who is just hurting and caught up and feels trapped. I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ. So we sing this last song as we have this invitation. I pray, Lord, that you work in the people here. Let the congregation know if you want to come back to the prayer bench and be prayed for. We would love to pray over you today. 
I love to pray for your marriage, your life, your work, your witness. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.